All right, if everyone's wide awake and happy, we'll call this meeting to order. Quite a crew we've got here. Uh, first item of business, public comment. Oh, one here for that. I got some public comment for you. Well, I mean, actually, we're gonna we're gonna go into that as a second. You'll have an opportunity to speak. So why don't we hold it? Well, I got some <coughs> some questions I want to throw out there, <coughs> and then I can talk to you too, if you want. Uh, why don't we let's just get through the, the, the minutes? Okay, that's fine. And then we can go to that. How's that? Motion on the minutes. All right, thank you, Brian. One second. Motion on the minutes, second by Terry. Any discussion or questions on those? Not? Call a question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now we'll go on to the issue of the annexation. And I think that's why some of you are here, so yeah. we'll open it up. Okay. I guess. <clears throat> Where do you want me? Anywhere? Anywhere you Anywhere want. You want. Oh, there in a snowbank. Slippery out there. I might fall down. I'm an old guy. We're not real formal here. Yeah. I'm Robert E. Wald. I have property at the Budding Airport on the south. And uh, I'm really disappointed in part of this airport board for voting to annex the property into the city last meeting with no information that I could find. Now, this is an airport commission for the good of the airport, not for the good of the city of International Falls. And I don't know why you're even discussing it now, because you guys always made up your mind and you voted, which is kind of foolish. But my questions, uh, how many homes are to build, be built? I assume that's why you're trying to annex us. So you build homes on Old Ewald property. Is that right or wrong? Or why, why are you trying to annex the airport property into the city? What good does it do the airport? Because it would allow the city to maybe expand. To where? Doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. It's an important issue. That, that will, it doesn't matter for us as airport commission, in my understanding, okay? How can All you... we're doing is taking the property inside the fence and putting it all in the city instead of all in the county. Well, now, if the city wants to expand beyond that, that's a whole another arena. And I'm not going to stand in the way of economic development, all right? And hear me out. Not me personally. I am not going to stand in the way. Well, now, when it goes beyond the fence... Okay, this is, this is my time, so let me finish. I got a few more things to bring up. Okay. Um, you say you're not going to stand on but there is no economic development. They have no plan. They have no cost basis for anything to run sewer and water out there. They have no commitment from KGM, as I understand, nothing in writing. And if you don't have it in writing, you don't have anything. You should know that. And, okay, what else? The airport is a joint commission. And it's worked very well for well over 50 years. You know that. Your dad was in there. And what is the city going to try to take over the airport commission? I think that's their goal. Are you sure? That's your, what you're saying. Let me, let me come with you. Uh, well, your mind's made up, you and Harley, so the there's not much sense talking. The county about. owns the airport, and the yeah. city owns half of the airport. Yes. And it's run should, by the city and, and the county, and the city and county own it. And it should stay that way. So why? what's the difference if the city has the airport in the city limits, and then it's all in the city and the county is all in the county, then it's 50-50, right? No, the county has no say if it's in the city limits. The county well, can't yeah. come in the city and tell you how to run it. You're on there, Rob. No, I'm not. It's a joint commission. Right? All of the courthouse, all the county offices are in the city. Are you telling me the city runs... They oh, are, but they don't come to your council meetings and tell you what to do. And if you own all the property, that's that's my one of my main concerns. And the other thing I looked up, and I've been looking at annexation, and I don't know which statutes you're going to use because I couldn't find any that applied to this situation. So that's my main questions. And then I have a petition here I want to leave with the board. And almost everyone on here within two or three people have property abutting the city or the airport. 
on the south and the, and the west, and they are opposed to it. And I went to people's houses. I didn't go to the grocery store and stand in line and ask people to sign this. I have their addresses and their names, and I'd like to get that in the minutes here too, opposing the annexation of the property by the city, because I don't think it would benefit anybody. I can't see any benefit to it. You can't develop on the airport, and so, and the city has no uh, no uh, agreement with anybody else to develop. So you're kind of just the pie in the sky thing. And I don't know how you guys do things, but a normal businessman doesn't do that. It's not good business to just poke, poke and hope, you know. So that's what I have to say. Secretary, get this. I don't have copies for you all. Right there. You may make copies and hand it out. So, and, uh, but I don't see what benefit this does to the airport itself. One more question. If we had a site plan from this developer, and if we had signed things on it then, would that change your mind? I would still be opposed to it because the city scares me. They're, they're, uh, they don't seem to very, be very fiscally responsible and they don't look down the road very much from what I can see. And I would go to a city council meeting, but you guys would probably just toss me out because I don't have patent property in there anymore. So, for me, well, but no, I don't, uh, I see no benefit to anybody, and I think the city is going to waste a lot of time and money, and KGM is just going to stand them up anyway. So, that's what I wanted to bring up this morning. All right, thank you. Any, anyone else? For yeah, I would like to see, see me. Um, I watched... Uh, the video of your past meeting and well i'm sorry we had a misunderstanding but i wasn't in favor of annexation my call to you was about kgm and our experiences with kgm so i'm sorry for that misunderstanding i'm i'm here to talk about annexation right now but that was about kgm yeah i know i i, I understand that i understand that you help me understand maybe why kgm wanted to annex they wanted to get out from under the county, from the county regulation that you're saying that, and I understood that part of it. Okay. I didn't really understand. I did. I didn't really think that you were in favor of the annexation, but I know you were saying that that was probably why they wanted it. That's yeah. what I'm okay. To Thank you. Uh, well, I, along with other airport neighbors, uh, were at the county board meeting yesterday, and I urged the county board to uh, carefully study the city city's proposal to annex the airport. Uh, if the city annexes all the airport property, then <clears throat> then the city could could forcibly annex adjacent private property. That's not saying they would, but then they have the ability to do that. Whereas now they don't have the ability to do that. And when I, I doubt that you guys are going to change your resolution supporting annexation of the all the airport property, but I do have to say before that before you did it, you really forgot something about that and you approve the resolution without knowing or even asking about uh, your neighbors and we're your neighbors and that impacts all of us and yet it wasn't a consideration and that's not very neighborly and i think we've been pretty good neighbors to the airport we haven't been complaining too much and uh you know we were uh, supportive of the airport reconstruction and getting that done we could have thrown a lot of sand in the uh, in the uh, gas tank uh, with KGM on what they were doing out there. We did not do that because we knew that would delay the airport and Highway 53. So they sort of had us in a position where we, we didn't want to do that. Now, talking to your neighbors before making a decision, um, it might surprise you in a positive way. And like I said, we were um, supportive of the construction. So things, if you talk to us and explain what, why you're doing things and what you're doing, well, maybe we could better understand that. And maybe we could even come up with a better solution that would make all of us happy. And that just didn't happen. Um, at least maybe we could be more accepting of what, what's going on. Now, looking at today's agenda and past agendas, it gives a, a good example of uh, 
about forgetting your neighbors. And under item G on your agenda, it's um, it's called under the engineering agenda. It's called the public involvement stakeholder update. <clears throat> I don't. That seems like it would be us, the neighbors. Uh, we're public. We're stakeholders. We're some of the bigger stakeholders, I would think. And yet, we've never been asked for anything. And I look back in the minutes, and there isn't any report on public involvement for stakeholder update. So. I figure that we've never been asked about it, and uh, that's a big omission that I, I would really like the airport commission to fix and make us part of it rather than excluding us or assuming that we're enemies and trying to just stop everything you're doing. That's not the case. The airport's here, it's here to stay, and we want to make it the best we can. So I don't think any of the other neighbors have been talking to either. Uh, asked about what's going on. No, uh, nobody's heard anything. Uh, well, the resolution to support the airport uh, annexation of all the um, airport property, it, it really seemed, in watching that video, it really seemed rushed. And I think we and Terry since that too. And what's the reason for that rush? I don't know. Uh, it just was puzzling to me. And so I would get, ask you guys to think about your neighbors. Don't forget about us. We're an important stakeholder that really has never been involved unless we pushed our way in. And that's not the way it should be. Uh, take your time and uh, do this right. We're not against economic development. Uh, Brian, I've been working on economic development for years and years. And this isn't against economic development. It's about doing things the right way. So that's my comments. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Commission. Thank you. I have one thing to add, if you guys have a minute yet. Yeah. I'm not against economic development either. But how can you say when you have absolutely no plan to do anything, you know, there's no analysts of anything. And the other thing I want to bring up, and this is really old. Originally, the airport ended at that road out there, went all the way straight through. And almost all the property the airport got came from Ewald's, early Schobert, Sutherland's. You know, we gave up a lot for this airport so it could expand. And that road they put in around the airport, and I know Mayor Anderson was trying to close that, that was kind of part of the agreement when we sold to them, that that road would be put in and built because there was no access to the highway that way at that time. This is in the 60s. It's not before your time, but getting close. So, I remember, you know, I want to throw that out. We have, we've we given up a lot for this airport, and because I lived right in the end of the runway before it expanded. And uh, all these fields on this side and the south were my dad's stuff up to where my property is now. So, you know, it, it don't make us feel like you're doing us a big favor or we have done nothing for the airport, because we've done a lot for the airport, and we've given up a lot. We had to move our home, Schobert's moved, uh, Sutherland's moved, and early sold a big chunk of their field back there, their property. So keep that in mind, too. And we, and we don't have a beef with uh, airport operations and, you know, the planes coming in. Well, some of them are noisy, but some of them are, most of them are very quiet. So that's not an issue at all. Thor has been good about responding to Beavers blocking the ditches and flooding our property. And so that's not it. It's it's coming to us. We're we we should be part of this whole thing, and we're not. All right. Well spoken. Thank you. And that's what's next on the agenda. We haven't approved this yet. This is, gonna, this is our next. This is part of this, right? Is that what you're It was yeah. in your meeting. Yes. It was approved. Three to two. It was approved. Yeah, it was at the last meeting. Yes, I did. Okay. We're trying to ram it through before the third meeting. Yes. That would make Murray abstain. Yes, you're absent. Oh no, I was here. Physically, anyway. Yeah. Here's the input. I bring it to the city. Yeah. I was out calling on where I didn't get a chance to review. I forgot we had done that. For what, it, what it's worth, I strongly oppose this is not the way to do business. I'm not even sure the airport commission is the right venue to be doing that. I think the county city should have done it because we own the, we own the airport. 
Yeah. Great. Just... I'm not even a neighbor, and I, I'm opposed to it. Because I don't think there's area to expand. All the houses have been removed from this area, so why would you annex the airport? I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, it's my opinion. Right. Well, thank you, everybody, for your comments. I wish you could have been here at the last meeting when we did this. All right, we will move on then to a financial statement. Uh, caused by the regulator 
that I'm aware of uh, since they were last there to get the repairs done. Right, thank you. Right. Any questions for Steve? Uh, or have we had any, uh, any more moisture problems? Or? Right now, no. Um, and this is pretty contest, obviously. Not, not a lot of wind, but a lot of rain. Yeah. Um, but I'll check it when we're done with the meeting. We'll see. Um, also, if I may, um, we've been uh, having uh, numerous electrical glitches in the terminal building. And uh, we've contacted Minnesota Power, and, and we're working uh, with the security company also. And uh, my team with Jackson have been, have been looking at, at the panels inside the building. We think we have somewhere inside the building that we have a contactor. Um, there's, 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 it's glitching in portions of the building, but not all the building. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio because one of the one of the canaries in the coal mine is is their system. Is, your system is really sensitive to, to the glitches. And so we started doing a, a basically a, a overlay of, of looking at Minnesota power spikes and what's happening inside the terminal. They're not the same. So uh, we're working on that this time. And also we, we're having some issues now with the generator um, with, a, uh, with a fuel vent on, on, on the induction side. They were here just yesterday, two days ago, I'm sorry, uh, working on it. So we're working on those issues. We're just letting the team know and try to resolve something. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Take it away. Can we move into the TSA discussion? Yes, please. Robert, you yeah. want to grab that TSA and, and I'll hop on board and go. Sure. So the TSA contacted the airport, uh, Thor, and we had a meeting with uh, the architects and Steve Trudeau uh, a couple weeks ago now. And they want to put in a baggage screening device in the baggage screening room. So right now, the, the bags go on the conveyor belt, go back to the baggage screening room. They are on a roller bed. And TSA uh, opens every bag and checks it before it, going, before it goes onto the plane. So this new device would be in place of the roller bed, and it would be a screening device um, where they're saying that uh, it, it wouldn't only about, I believe, Thor, correct me if I'm wrong, I was going from my memory here, 10% of the bags would need to be screened, uh, I'm sorry, opened, uh, and then the screening device would, would, would take care of the other bag. That is my understanding, this is correct. Okay. And this is a, this is not a, the TSA is not saying that you have to do it. Um, it's a, it's a nice to have. And so it's really up to the commission if you want to do it or not. The issue is getting the device into the room. So we've looked at several, uh, several different options. And the option uh, that we believe would probably be the best would be to come in through the vestibule doors, and then we would need to uh, cut holes in the walls to get to the baggage screening room to bring the device in, and then uh, repair those walls. So that is the that's what's on the table, but we don't know. Uh, TSA said that they would pay for the device, of course, um, and they would pay for the electrical hookups for the device, but they, it would be up to the commission to pay for, uh, pay for the holes in the wall to get the device into the room. And for us to, to move forward with that, uh, we would need to involve you know, our structural engineers, the architects, um, and Krauss Anderson to come up with a design and then also the, the actual construction cost to do that. And we have not done that to date. 
we wanted to get a feel for what the commission is uh, is looking for. Do you have anything to add to that, Steve or Thor? Yeah, if I may, man. Well, yeah. Okay. No, you play no. Well, I would, cool. My only comment would be listening to you, ka-ching, ka-ching. Oh, it's uh, very expensive. I can imagine. And in, 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 if I may, yeah, please. Sir. What 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 I what my research tells me and what I sense is that, with all due respect, number one, it is not a requirement from the TSA. It is it, it is not an enhancement to, of of the screen of the bags. Frankly, um, Raytheon's on board. There's a there's a there's a big money play here, and um, there's no guarantees of of uh, really at the end result how much more efficient we're going to be. Um, in, in my opinion, the Bob did a, did a great job describing uh, how you know with that how we get inside into the air that they want to that they want to put it in is is that and we don't know. Can correct me if I'm wrong, Bob. If those doors, if we would leave those doors behind, in essence, the 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 the, the, the Sky West to counter, um, if those doors were left for future uh, uh, moving in out of that area. Would they have to be a secure door? Would there be a locked door? Does it have to be a secure wall, et cetera? And, um, and, and at the end of the day, frankly, you know, we don't know if this equipment's going to be downsized or uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future. The, the, the sad part about it is, and I, and I shared this, frankly, with uh, Shawnee and Casey briefly yesterday, um, in my memory banks uh, during the design phase of the terminal building, frankly, this was discussed. And, 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 in, and in my memory, um, uh, frankly, I, I was assured, in my mind anyway, uh, I could be wrong, um, that that new size equipment would fit in, our, in, in, the, in the design of that area, and that has not worked out, unfortunately. So um, um, I will do whatever the commission's you know, pleasure is to do with this. I'm just not sure that um, I, 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 I can only imagine it's a very expensive modification of the building. Very expensive. I guess the other question would be: Is it something that actually enhances safety? And it gets us. It gets us with every other airport. Bemidji and Brainerd welcomed the fact that they were going to get these machines. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know what it costs them, but I'm not going to put a kibosh on this till I have a dollar figure what it's right. going to cost. Because I've so they just, been with TSA to look at the different things and bring it in here. And I know what that machine does for efficiency, especially when you get a Sun Country flight in here with 150 bags, and they have to physically go through every single bag. Do the other you two know? airports have to go through the same thing? Cutting the... I don't know that. I don't know that either. That's that's why I think it's we need to at least explore what, what is it going to cost. Yeah. And there's, uh, sorry, there's no way to bring it through the garage, or I guess I don't there, know. There's the setup there, there's back there. Probably I've three different been, ways they can bring they're it. They're like only through that once on a tour, but. And what about putting it inside the terminal? Because I know, like some of the airports I've been in, you bring your bag to the machine, and then TSA carries it to the loader or whatever, you know, the belt. So can you put it in the terminal without putting it in the back room? Don't know that. That's a TSA question. Mm -hmm. But that's that's security. So engineers have to work there. But I think we should at least explore what it's going to come because there's there. I know there's three different ways you can get it coming through the glass doors. You know, cutting a hole in the two wood walls to go in. The concrete wall straight out the ramp, or you can come in the garage door and come through the hole that's already there. It's just a matter you got to cut another three inches out because the machine is 60 inches wide, approximately 10 feet long, weighs about a thousand pounds. Yeah, big. So, yeah, we looked at other ways to bring it in. If we brought it in on the air side, there's electrical that's in the way on the air side um, and then there's structural walls between the garage and the baggage area that really can't and, and a lot of conduit running up that wall that it, you couldn't be able to bring it in that way either right the electrical is the biggest problem that i see 
the, the, that's going to be the most cost costly. Trying to move that. In the other, in the other the discussion was, correct me if I'm wrong. I I, I don't believe double quotation marks that is federally fundable. Correct? The FA will not participate. That we. I need to look into that, Thor, but I okay. believe they would not. Um, they typically do not participate in back of the house. Back of the house areas just generally not uh, federally eligible. Now, that may be different with the new funding, um, but we would need to look into that. That was a question I had, too. And what about the other money that we CARES money? Yeah, the CARES money we're getting back. No. How about the CARES money? I don't know, Thor. On that, that's more flexible. Yeah, the CARES money is more flexible, I think, is definitely an option. The other option with your bill funding that you got from the infrastructure bill, you know, your extra about a million a year, um, is also more flexible in a different way because it's you can use it on anything you can use your regular entitlements on, but you can also use it on anything that's PFC eligible. And I think that that would be PFC eligible, therefore should be eligible to use your infrastructure bill money on, is my... Yeah, I mean, because because I'm with you, Wade, you know, if it's gonna be to change the chain that it's coming out of what city and county got to kick okay. in, that's a different story, but I'd like to know what the amount right. is first, yeah. and then whether we can use that or not, you know. Well, let's, let's move on with it. Let's move yeah, on with it. Get some customers. Get some because customers. if we're going to grow and get more people and more bags, we need to make them, get them so they're as efficient as any other airport around. And and I, I don't know, Kyra, if you can call Bemidji and Brainerd to try and find out, you know, what it cost them and how they did it. Maybe, maybe if they used CARES money yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Well, it'll be much more feasible if we can get some outside dollars. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, so we'll see what the other two are. Okay, I'm just curious if uh, the airports have got holes in their walls and uh, all that fun stuff. All right. So, so am I hearing you would like us to move forward with a proposal to uh, to investigate the, the cost of this? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And I would so move. I'll second it. Yeah. All right, we've got a motion and a second. By giving authorization, any discussion on that? Hearing none, call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Continue. Thank you, okay. Thanks, so Bob. I'll put together a, a proposal. I'll get the, the team members involved, and we'll uh, bring that to the commission at the, at the next commission meeting. Good. Sounds good. We we still like you, Bob. So. <laughs> good. That was a great discussion. I like that you always say that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Continue. All right. Nothing further on the terminal, Bob or Steve. We're good. Nothing from my yeah, nothing further on my end. Thank you. All right. Thanks to you both. Hey, before I get started, might as well talk about the jet bridge too. You know, this this weather has been perfect prime example or mm -hmm. prime opportunity to see if we're going to get leaks in it or anything we had sun country raised it up we got all this warm weather and that and it's not leaking so and then we got that behind us that's good that's good <laughs> thank you good to hear it yeah <clears throat> well, i can remember walking in there when the roof fell and we, we, oh, went, out, we went out with, i went out with her, with her. And, yeah, and i'm just waiting for a major major breakdown in oh. the parts yeah. how are we gonna It'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to do some yeah. old fabrication and modification to it. Really. Yeah. That brings up another question. Have we found someone else that we're going to be able to use if it does go down? Have we found another company that can help us? Not at this point. Okay. We're looking. Okay. We have been looking. Yeah. yeah. You know, one thing I was going to add, you know, um, as part of the COVID relief bill, there was three pots of money. Um, you know, some of it is directly related to ongoing maintenance. Um, so your CARES funding you can use for development, CARISA and ARPA, or your two other pots of money. Um, those funds can be used for maintenance activities. 
um, maintenance of the jet bridge would be considered part of that. Um, it might be, um, you know, something you can look into just to get a quote to see what it would take to have somebody come and, and just do a, as every so often, just evaluation of the, the jet bridge preventive maintenance type things. I don't know, it's just an idea. Uh, once we find a company that, that would search. Actually, we need to do it now. If I brought you out there right now and, and swung that thing around, you'd swear it's going to fall apart. Yeah. I mean, the noises it makes is crazy. You know, it's got to be grinding on something when you listen to it. So We, we know a few and, and that's companies. my concern, that, that it's just going to crash one of these days. We know a few companies that, you know, with the, with the Mare Bridges, I think, demise, that, you know, might service that. So I'll share those with Thor. And okay. We'll see if we can get somebody to come take a look at it. We need to have somebody look at it because we'll verify we, found, it. we found Teflon parts that, that are laying on the ramp that right. come out of there. So there's, and that could be why it's making the noise that it is because it's metal on metal. It's then, and, we, and we've looked and we can't find it. Yeah, the right. darn thing. Yeah. You know, not only the maintenance, but uh, we need parts. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got, we've got and that's coming for sure. We're going to have to get a source some of them. So. We'll find some contacts and share with Thor just to get somebody to take a look at it. I think it should be part of the, you know, some of those MNO type programs. Because yeah. this jet bridge moves unlike any other jet bridge so far as it's swinging 90 degrees yes. every every time. Yes. Where if you go to, you know what it's like in the cities, they're only basically going ahead and the actual wheels might be turned around six feet. That's it. Yeah. 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 So, and with the slope of the ramp, that whole the whole thing, the whole geometry changes so dramatically. Yeah. We'll find some contacts for you. Thank you, Sean. Moving on to the airside update, uh, the runway work, um, no significant updates. Uh, we're working through just sort of kind of the the current mill height, uh, the application, quantity justifications, and then they'll uh, be back to work before we know it. Here, the snow is accumulating right now, but soon it'll be melting, and we'll get. Uh, of both a phase two and phase three contractor to wrap up their work in May. Um, we did, uh, we're working with flight check a little bit, just uh, FAA flight check just to validate some of the reference points on the ground. Uh, those are, are generally the, the updates a little bit quieter here uh, as, as we get into the, the spring. Uh, runway 422 design, um, so that's the, the re, uh, rehabilitation of the crosswind runway. Um, we're working through that design. Um, Basically, we're, we're getting plans on the shelf, and then when the FAA is ready to fund that project, uh, we'll be ready to go. Uh, it's kind of timely. Uh, Thor is working with our, our new certification inspector, and uh, he's highlighted just a few geometry issues with 422, which uh, we will be able to correct with this design. So I think it's, it's timely, and we'll be able to uh, correct those, those items. Um, turn it over to Casey just to talk a little bit about 422 and, and its justification. Yeah, so I think, you know, at the last meeting we talked about um, some of the concerns that the FAA had brought up on the eligibility of the Crossman runway for reconstruction. Um, and the eligibility is based on the wind coverage of your primary runway, so how often your main runway is able to serve aircraft from a wind coverage standpoint. Um, and historically, your um, primary runway did not have enough wind coverage for the small planes, therefore the FAA would fund the crosswind um, that's designed for smaller aircraft. When we look at the more recent data, the wind appears to have improved um, for your primary runway. But we think um, really what's driving that data change is when the, the ASOS, your weather sensors um, and your weather system was relocated when the runway was extended. Um, it, it's kind of moved closer to a forested area that's in um, kind of a critical area around that, that weather equipment. So we're, we're running different data and getting input from National Weather Service and FAA Tech Ops that own some of that equipment um, and working on putting together a package to the FAA to kind of show that that relocation is what triggered the change in, in data and it's actually a less accurate reporting in that um, new newer location, so we're working on that uh, with the, with the FA. We'll kind of continue those discussions uh, through this spring. Any questions on that? So you're talking about lengthening that runway? No, just reconstructing what's there. Um. Well, moving on to the building area planning study, I have just a couple slides uh, to share. Um, we can go to the next one, Chelsea. 
Um, just as a reminder, we looked at a few different alternatives, um, and I'll kind of blast through these first couple slides here um, kind of quickly, but we had a couple alternatives um, of a fuel farm that could be located kind of northeast of the SRE building. The difference between um, these two alternatives is the one on the right, we've actually kind of pulled the fuel farm um, toward a little bit closer to the fence and then could allow for potentially like a little drive-through lane for a fuel, both the tanker truck for loading um, or unloading the fuel and then the, the fuel trucks with loading fuel to be able to kind of just have more maneuverability space and potentially um, continue to allow for aircraft parking in that area as well. Um, and then if you can go to the next slide, um, although, you know, definitely not preferred by, you know, the, I think both Thor and, and the commission based on previous conversations, we did show some other options to the FA, um, one being kind of between the, the garage building and the SRE on the GA ramp, um, and then the other being the site of the, the former um, balloon launch facility. The, um, you know, site on closer to the FBO, um, you know, does seem like most likely the highest and best use of that space is probably a hangar and not a fuel farm. Um, and then the area um, down with the balloon, old balloon launch facility, um, you know, just creates some additional access um, challenges and then would just have also a lot more um, fuel truck movements either on the taxiway or on the roads. Um, and generally, you know, maybe not the most desirable location. And, you know, fast forward many, many years from now, you know, if you ever, you know, like once you reconstruct the primary runway again, if you did want to consider that temporary runway, um, you know, not having structures in that space would allow for an addition, you know, again, using a temporary runway um, many years from now, um, if you wanted to consider that again. So. Um, you know, I think the FA is supportive of the preferred location, which is um, shown, you can jump Chelsea to the next one right here. Um, and so we're kind of working on fine tuning this. I think one um, concern that the FA has brought up um, is just that their preference is that all of the access would be from the land side, so from the parking lot, so the, all the tanker loading and unloading. Um, which, you know, when you look at the auto parking lot, would be really challenging to maneuver a tanker truck up in there um, to offload fuel and potentially would need, you know, another access point onto the roadway and, and generally, you know, a lot more expensive. Um, and I, I think Thor brought up some good points in our meeting with the FA that, you know, there's a, a big value in having the access point that they're using right next to the FBO so that there can be control over their access, check in with them, um, and just you know, be aware with what they're what they're doing. So, I don't think um, you know the FA is going to mandate that that access come from the parking lot side. It was just a suggestion that they brought up. Um, so we'll continue to work through that, um, but finalizing that, um, and then we're working right now on um, kind of finalizing the building area alternatives. You know, showing the long-term plan had always been to go towards the north, but obviously it's uh, quite a bit of wetlands up there, and then the relocation of the balloon launch facility creates a lot of opportunity to the south. Um, so we're working on um, kind of fine-tuning layouts, um, really focusing on that south area for building area expansion and looking at, you know, how you could build taxi lane expansion down there to accommodate additional hangar construction. And as we think of, you know, how you could spend that infrastructure bill funding, that would be, you know, a good opportunity to use that money here over the next five years if you felt you had a need to accommodate additional hangar growth area in that direction. So Jackie will be joining us in April um, to talk um, in more detail about the alternatives and presenting some fine-tuned um, building area alternatives. Uh, we do plan here over the next month to connect with the, the county engineer and, and county staff just a little bit more on the access to um, the county road there um, from, you know, obviously vehicles will need to get into that building area to the south and, and really starting, you know, we could reuse that access point um, where the old uh, balloon launch facility was, or we could even relocate it a little bit to the south and just kind of thinking through what makes the most sense and making sure that we're getting um, input from the county on that as well. So we'll uh, work through that here over the next month and have feedback to share at the next commission meeting. Um, so uh, with the schedule, we are planning on um, trying to wrap things up here through the spring as far as the final alternatives and recommendations. 
um, and moving into the CIP and ALP update this summer, um, which will um, hopefully facilitate um, the, the next kind of fuel farm development and next steps on that project. Any questions or Thor, anything to add? Was there any thought of if it's possible to access that fuel farm on that end from County Road 1, from the County Road? Or is that something that you couldn't do? Couldn't do uh, the, the, the ditching and proximity to the homes onto the north. Okay, okay right. And then one, one other point, if I may, um, regarding access on this side is that that, that whole area, that's it's no removal storage for us. For for the parking, but a good question, yeah. No, I just thought, if the, I mean, you would have to have the, it'd be mainly for the tankers to come in versus, you know, anybody else coming into fuel, but it'd be something that would at least have the tankers not have to run through there, but I just, right. I don't know. I, right. I, I don't know exactly where it's at or sure. So. Yeah, you'd have to build a road to it, right? Correct. But I appreciate your looking long term. I mean, you bet. 30 years ago, Absolutely. <laughs> meetings in the upstairs here. Sure. Who would have ever dreamed that yeah. the changes that have been right. Or our little or our little office. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, we couldn't do it with the yeah. uh, with the with the uh, yeah. manic accessible. In case I heard you mention something about in the future if we ever needed to use the taxiway again as a runway. If we go with Putting hangers on that south end on the blue launch areas, does that negate being able to do that then? I don't think so. You know, we'd kind of be so on the north building area, you know, where that closest hangar is, you know, we're really probably, we definitely don't want to be closer than that, you know, because right. we know that that wingtip clearance just meets that. Um, but I think, you know, that's a great point. We do want to plan for, you know, kind of that same thing with the hangers that right. we're not going to Because when I see that south blue, I'm looking at, you know, the blue goes right to the taxiway. And so yeah. well, that's why I asked. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the best route to go as long as we don't lose the taxiway as a future runway. Of course. Like yeah, we course. did last summer. So. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, when you think of the hangar layout, you're likely not going to be able to do something like you have on the north where you're kind of having taxi lanes. It's probably going to be, you know, one row of hangers where the hangar doors all face the taxiway right. is probably all you're going to, sure. you know, fit. But you can obviously keep going for quite a ways yeah. um, down the taxi lane. Okay. Yeah, I wish uh, Chuck Lepper and your dad could have seen that. Yeah. So I think that's it on the planning study. Um, Chelsea's up. We're talking money now. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning, Chels. Um, so the general aviation ramp lighting improvement project is underway. We are working on the design for that. It'll be the three uh, overhead light poles shining onto the general aviation ramp extending from the existing fuel farm down to kind of the end of that apron area um, past the SRE building. Uh, the project will bid via quotation package packages uh, to contractors. Um, they'll be due mid-April and considered at the April commission meeting. Um, the request uh, will request coordination with the FAA for a grant application once the quotes are received and uh, we'll meet that April with an FAA grant deadline. So that project's underway and uh, going well. All right. Any questions? One, one item, if, if possible, um, if you would consider um, approving the grant application, because that'll happen before your next meeting. We'll get the quotes, we'll have all the costs. Um, we can submit to that grant application by the April 11th grant deadline. Um, and then you can consider the, the bids at the April meeting. Um, if for some reason you don't proceed with uh, the project, um, you can resend that grant application, but there is that April one grant deadline. So uh, that's usually a, a signature by the, by the chairman. So um, if you consider that approval between the months, that would be, that'd be helpful from our FA deadline. So we'll move. We've got a motion by what? Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, real quick funding update. Um, we've talked a little bit the last couple of meetings about the the bill money. That's the infrastructure bill uh, money, um, where you're getting the additional approximately a million dollars per year. Um, and again, that can be used on anything you can typically spend the FA money on. 
as well as, like we mentioned earlier, anything that's PFC eligible. So that eligibility is expanded a little bit with this funding, um, which for commercial service airports is definitely helpful. Um, so really what we're doing now, you know, as we're wrapping up the master plan, um, by chance you have really good timing that we're kind of pausing and doing this planning effort. So, um, you know, we can kind of take a look at all of your different needs. Um, and, and we've talked a little bit about some of the potential projects, but, you know, you could think of, um, you know, definitely, like we mentioned earlier, that, that um, TSA equipment uh, could be something to consider. Um, taxi lane extension, if you wanted to consider hangar area development and having build, buildable space for, for hangars. Um, one thing we can talk with the FA about as well is um, the terminal parking lot rehab, if they would consider that um, for funding. Um, they likely won't consider the whole parking lot eligible, but potentially portions of it. So we'd be working on some different eligibility considerations and maybe MnDOT could come to the table for anything that would be ineligible um, within the parking lot. Um, also, um, you know, if you wanted to consider, you know, rehabilitation or a new art building or SRE building, um, you know, and thinking about, you know, where are they at in their lifespan and would it be a good time to, to replace those. So, um, you know, as we're wrapping up the CIP over the next few months on the master plan, I think we'll have more conversations at, at upcoming meetings. Um, about um, the best way to, to use that funding. Um, the FA is being very flexible on it. So I think right now they're kind of asking to say, hey, you know, what's a potential wish list? Um, just to kind of give them an idea. Um, but they are saying you can continuously kind of update your CIP plan for that money every year um, and kind of adapt as, as things go on here over the next five years. So the FAA is asking for airports to submit just an updated CIP by April 1st. Um, and really the purpose of that is that they need to do their annual report to Congress to say, hey, the airports have a plan to spend, you know, the typical entitlement money that they already get. And this is um, something that they report up every year. Um, and then this year with the additional infrastructure bill money, the FAA really wants to be able to say to Congress, you know, look, we have a plan, everybody needs all this money you gave us and, and we're going to go ahead and spend it. Um, so we do need to update that CIP um, by April 1st. So I don't know if there's thoughts or preferences on kind of placeholder projects you'd like to put in there for now. Um, again, it's definitely flexible. Um, and you can continue to change it kind of continuously over the next five years. Parking. Just look at what Ken's trying to do out there with that, trying to plow that thing off. We need to get that parking lot straight away so far as long-term, short-term, and rental so that the doors guys can clean that thing up a lot easier. I mean, you struggle. Yeah, we have to. I agree with with Brian is that we have to come up with the, the long term parking is is got too excessive. There's too many people, too many year rounders. I mean, you look what's out there right now. Right. And that's not even what the Sun Country guys here. Right. You know, the Sun Country. I mean, here, when Sun Country was here yeah. a couple of weeks ago, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look out there and it's a mishmash. And then you you got all the rental cars so that are over here. Come that's a way to control. You know, right. It's it needs to, it needs to be towards the top of the list. Mm -hmm. When the five-star your operator gets so close to those cars, yeah. I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be real nervous. They just so. nick them once in a while. No, I don't like it. Well, Ken's pretty pretty careful. He's he didn't believe me. He, he, he knows his uncle would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got that on the notes here, Brian. It's a good idea. I think what I'd like to see, too, is uh, the development of this runway for the new hangers over here. So, yeah. that, that, so that we have space available when people want to build one. Absolutely. It's all set. It's all it's shovel ready to go build your hangar right there. And that, I, think that, I think that's an important part of it, too, for future. That's, that's part of growth. I don't know, Kyra, do you have waiting lists or anything for people who want to build hangers? Sure do. Yeah, so yeah, there you go, so right there. We've got some I mean, that we know, build that. That's, that's so something that's evolved too. Be because remember when we first started talking about it, we didn't know if anybody was going to. Correct. People I mean, look how that grew over there. We, you know, this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, people were pounding in the doors. They had a couple of people that had expressed interest over the years, but that was it. Then we built it. Wait, did they come? What's that say? You can build it. <laughs> it comes. Pretty amazing. 
quality unit to, I mean, no expect to fill up, but at least you can have space available when somebody wants to build one. Yeah. All right. That doesn't happen to our new jail. <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring that up. <laughs> All right, anything further on that? Just uh, some brief, very, very brief updates. State funding, we're working with Ford on getting a mower submitted, but supply issues have been challenging. Um, yeah, so maybe you can cover that on your update after okay. there's any other motions there. Um, and then we've submitted the sign and marking plan. Chelsea's done great work with the uh, new FAs, certain inspector on uh, five different rounds of emails. Uh, make, make that uh, get accepted. So. We have a new 139 inspector, and uh, and it is uh, Chelsea's plan. <laughs> yeah. uh, working with, with Chelsea and Sean and my team, it, it's, uh, shall we say, it's it's a it's a much more productive environment right now, which is great, good, fantastic. Good. Uh, this individual uh, appears in Chelsea's chain. Ch Ch tell me if I'm wrong. The, the, uh, this person is, is approachable and doesn't have a agenda. Yes, a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I'll bring the fresh air. Yes, so, yeah. So that's fantastic. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Anything else? All right. Well, then we'll move on then. In the interest of time, airport management contract. Yes, if I may, please. Yeah. Um, as I, I shared in the last uh, commission meeting about uh, our financial situation, uh, Riders and Flying Service, and uh, the uh, commission was, was uh, so gracious and kind to to uh, have a meeting with a committee of, of uh, Mr. Murray and Wade, and uh, we sat down and discussed it and shared the, the situation. We had a fist fight or two, but we got to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the deal? Oh, no, I'm not throwing Oh, I'm telling you what it was. So, uh, thank you. Um, so today, uh, everyone has a copy of the, of the airport management contract on page two. Uh, there's a breakdown of our, of our current rates, and, and uh, if I may uh, uh, share with you uh, the proposal um, uh, of, of the increase of, of rates of, of, what, uh, of what we're asking from the commission, and if I may just run down the list, that would be okay. Thank you. Um, for the driver only equipment owned by the commission uh, right now, we're at $19.67 an hour and uh, asking to increase that by $4.72, which would put that at $24.39 per hour. And currently, I'm paying my teams, my senior guys are making 25 an hour, just so you know. Um, General Airport Labor uh, is now at 2046. I would ask to increase that by four dollars ninety one cents to twenty five dollars and thirty seven cents an hour. Um, standby ARF movements at this point are fifteen dollars uh, per ARF movement. So a FA requirement has to have a checkbox for a person. Um, increasing that to, by three dollars and sixty cents to eighteen dollars and sixty one cents. Um, really late movements again on the, on, the, on the daytime side eight seventy six. Increasing that two dollars and ten cents to ten eighty six. Um, on the uh, manager activities, that's me. Um, that is currently at twenty five sixty seven, and I would ask to increase that by six dollars and sixteen cents to thirty one eighty three per hour. One thing that I'm glad I have the opportunity to share and thank you is on the electrician side and the billing for Anderson Flying Service uh, providing the electrician for the airport. There is understandably some miscommunication uh, of what happens with that. That is a bill through from Jackson Electric to us that there is no upcharge on that. That's a one for one. So when I'm asking for an increase um, uh, for the airport management contract, um, the effect is um, uh, I am directly involved in that in that in that pay through, but there is no uh, we're not making a profit uh, uh, from from Jackson Electric providing his his electrical his electrical. Uh, uh, on the airport, so that's what it's at. Thank you. Was that? Are you asking for an increase? Or? No, I'm not. not for, for, electrical, for electrical, no, negative, no. Okay. No, that no, that because frankly, thank you for asking that question. Um, I'm not. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not here, honestly, trying to trying to make a profit. I'm just trying to. We we, we went through it with our, you know. And, in depth. I mean, it's just, you look at what's going on today for wages and rates, and it's very reasonable. Uh, I, yeah. well, I think it's four and a half years since you've had a race on your. I, I think. 
I'll make the motions of that. But but I would like to say sure. on the electrician, if you want to, if we want to change the wording, that is just whatever you build from Jackson. Okay. So so then we know what it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. It's absolutely whatever you want to do. No, whatever, because, yeah. because I can work with with you know that car, right? You know her. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, but you know what I mean? Sure. I mean to make it sure. cleaner so that everybody understands it's right. It's whatever he's charged. Okay. You know, and we can. Right. Uh, the, our only option then is we find somebody else other than Tim. Correct. Right. So, go ahead. Okay. I, I would. I'm for this too, and I, I, I can see that it's it's substantial. But like you said, if there's nothing been done for four years, how how are we going to address this in the future? Can we have a review every two years or something like that, rather than make well, make Thor come in and, and ask for yeah, something? We should I like a big and like. This. We should. We should. Uh, we could. Now we can make the agreement. Just make it for two years. And at the end of two years, we have to go talk about it. Yeah, know? I think that we we should have something like that. Okay. Just so that it's, it's talked on about. Schedule. It's on a schedule. It's not a motion. Is it, is this, yeah. Yes, I, I would make that motion. Otherwise, it's like anything else. You know, you don't you don't raise rates for right. for any length of time. Pretty soon it jumps up, and everybody. Oh man! man. And and just, and this is a five-year contract. That's to me somewhat unusual. I would correct. Yeah. I mean, for you, I would say sure. maximum yeah. three. Two is fine. It was yeah. whatever you feel. Yeah. And, and just and, that's, and thank you for the support and those thoughts. And just and just, I'm reminding myself too, not reminding the group, but this is really. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I even would have thought about this if we were in quote unquote normal business years. But the last two years with the COVID, with with the COVID situation, right. we've just we can't keep. All right, we you're right. Keep yeah, I would, I, would make, I would make a motion that we have this. There's a contract for two years if Thor's agreeable, and and then I already made the motion. For two more years. There you go. But I'm going to add that. I'll add that it's two years. Okay. And you can say. Or a two-year two review uh, of leave the contract and a two-year review. Yeah. Would that makes sense. That's what we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll second. All right. We've got a motion and a second. Is any any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Actually, it was fun to be one. Or Okay. <laughs> okay. Where you Secretary's report? Yeah. yeah. Make it brief. Yeah, yeah. Make it brief, Kyrie, because somebody's got to get it done. Oh, yeah, for now. Yeah, let her. I know she has to roll, so let's. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just have. I'll come back. Uh, oh, I've got to come back. Two things, uh, employments in the packets for February, and then I've got two marketing pieces, uh, one for CKDR in uh, Fort Francis and Dryden, uh, questioning if we want to extend uh, the advertisements there. They will end um, the end of uh, March. With the border reopening April 1st, I think it's really good that we yeah, keep agree. our presence up yeah, there. Yeah. So. Uh, no. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. Because April 1st is supposed to really open up. Coming quick, yeah. Do we want to do, there's options of 4, 8, and 12 weeks, so. What do you uh, recommend? Do you, if we want to just do the 12 weeks and then we're good for, you know. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a winner. Through the summer, right? Right, for the most part. 12 weeks it is, then. Yep. All right. Any questions or comments? That's great news, by the way, that April 1st. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The other one I have is the Fort Francis Times, uh, the, the Ontario Vacation Guide. Um, this is something that we have done in the past, but with COVID, they have not. They didn't do it last year. Um, in the past, the commission has always done the triple map ad. Uh, which is a Canadian cost of seven hundred seventy-five dollars, so that would then be converted to U.S. dollars. But um, and we'll come out ahead, yeah. and that's okay in the budget. Yeah, absolutely, we have plenty of funds in the budget, so. I would move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any any questions on that? Good work. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, opposed. Motion carried. Anything else? Then? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. I wanted to get you going here. Then we can get back to thank you. We can get back to Mr. Anderson. Yes. Uh, thank you, Matt. Yep. Cool. Yeah, okay. Cool. Cool. Um, Sean had made reference to a uh, new uh, John Deere uh, tractor uh, mower, 72 inch tech mower, and the room, same unit we have it now. Uh, chatting with the uh, John Deere dealer who works through the state bid list. Um, fascinating uh, uh, supply chain shortage issue. Can't even order one. 
they're not available. They're not. And whether it's Kubota or JD or, or uh, Aaron's or whatever, Toro, same situation, over a year out, can't even get in the line, can't even get a list. So we're going to have to make this one, and then we really need to do one, frankly. But we'll make it work. It'll well, we'll weld it here and there. We'll wait. So just an interesting sidebar story. Uh, and I bet, I bet those delays are also coming with much higher prices. Yes. More can bet on it. The, uh, it it's, um, I would... Working with uh, work, working with with Sean and Casey on the fuel farm, and working with Westmore Industries uh, designing the, the tanks. The fuel farm. Um, for for our tanks, the new tanks that, that, that we need to install, um, they can't even give us a they, they 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 won't even give us a figure. They won't even give us a number. And when they do give us a number, they want their payment. They want their payment like in seven days. Total up front, without no, no install, having been built, hasn't been touched. The materials have not even in hand. And so that, that's kind of interesting for cash flow. I'm not complaining, just the way it is, where it's at. Kind of interesting. Different world. It's a different world. Um, at 10.30 today, we have a uh, ramp wedding project meeting. Who's in that meeting with us? Um, Chelsea and her electrical engineer are gone. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, the whole team knows uh, the flight reduction schedule uh, went through. Uh, hopefully temporary. Uh, as you know, uh, we made the cut that we're still on the AS list, which is wonderful. Um, hoping and praying for the best to keep that keep that going. Uh, a lot of a lot of cities got cut. Is I think I forwarded that information to everyone. And what's going on there? It, it, it's pretty interesting. Um, recently, uh, as as shared with the email that I sent out to the group with the Cessna on. Uh, just kind of a self-explanatory situation, and, uh, and I just wanted to say again, thank you for the group. And, and in the email, I said thank you for, for helping us, but I really meant it for the community because it wasn't for the support of the team. Uh, that whole team wouldn't have been here with the rent of cars and restaurants and bars and hotels and what have. They'll be back next year in force, uh, as Gulfstream will also. And um, and a little sidebar to it, uh, I was talking to Whip last night. He called me Whip One, and they're already working with Whip Line Float Company to certify the equipment float. So it's kind of a small town kind of in there. So yeah, uh, neat testing program. Nice group of people. Always fun to work with them. It's always exciting. Uh, again, thank you very much for the support. Um, one last uh, a sidebar thing. Uh, very very interesting. Um, contacted to. Uh, Two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, I contacted the Swice hangar door company. They make the majority of hangar doors, but they're the, they're the premier. A lot of folks use them in a lot of different areas in the industry. But I, when I went online, I, I noticed that one of their top cues on the website is security doors. They call them specialty doors now. So I talked to, I called old man Swice. We've known each other for years. And uh, so I said, hey, I said, I, I'm curious. I said, I see in your website that you have your quote unquote your your custom made doors your security doors uh, at venues and, and, and you know you see them in the ballparks and football stadiums but now more and more in the cities and so right now swice doors hangar doors number one demand is security doors at retail stores in downtown metropolitan areas because this because the crime rate is so bad that they're designing the doors literally literally bulletproof it's insane, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's like, and, I'm, and he, of course, it's great for him, right? He's like, he says, oh, I'm really thankful I've got the bit of this. It's also like, is that where we are in society? And we are. It's it's insane. I mean, it's, it's uh, you're going to pay for it. Yeah, and then so they're they're building, they're, they're building these security doors, and like everybody's going like, oh, it's okay, right? You know, it's it just, I, I just found it really interesting that, that uh, that's their number one demand. Security doors for stores. Like people are moving out of cities and coming to areas like that. Yeah. Right. I tell, I tell people, Carol and I have never locked our door. In all the years we've been there. Never had a thing bothered. Be there with the neighbors that yeah, have working in the house. We get the yeah. dog speaks over there. Uh, where, where can you find that? That's right. Yeah, it's moving I, north. I just saw. I, I, I'm, I, I just. I found this really fascinating. Just two days ago, I just read an article. Uh, number one reason for higher rates of now and unemployment in downtown New York City is crime because people won't go to work because they're afraid to go down. They're, they're afraid to walk down the street and it's uh, Yeah, just something interesting that we had the uh, one of the owners from Cobblestone come to them meeting the other night in, in this, for the city. And, yeah. and their projected uh, opening date is June 1st. For the border? No, no for, for the, 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 the border. Oh, I'm sorry. If we, if we, if we, if we, we could, could not, 
But then we can we can continue to talk if, if you want to. Yes. Would someone make a motion? Uh, let's set the next date quick. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm back to the uh, Wednesday? appointments. Wednesdays. Yeah. I've got a medical do. That's right. Yeah. Thursday the 28th. Thursday the 28th. Yeah. That'll work. Oh, did that? Yeah. 28. Uh, what is that? April. Okay. Yes. April 28th. Correct. That's a Thursday. Yep. Thank you. And it'll be oh. summer. It'll be summer. Thor, no, Thor no, mentioned no, that. Sure we're we're yeah, we got a meeting at eight that morning. I got a meeting at eight that morning. Thor, so do I. So does Tony. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. Do you want Friday? Friday? Go, go ahead. 29th. Friday yeah, morning. I'm, I'm wait, open wait, there. Beer in Duluth on Friday. Corrections. Wait, yeah, no, doctor. 26th. Oh, doctor, that time. Okay. 26th. 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 What? Tw a Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I got an East Coast to on that. I'm every day. I'm so the so board there is. I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. I got a sewer board too. You've got three of us there. The board meeting is Tuesday. Right, no holiday. What if we do it later in the day? On one of the Yeah, that'd work, sure. On which day? Thursday, we can do it after 10. Back at 10 o'clock. Thursday at 10? Thursday at 10. Thursday at 10. Monday the 25th. So I'm hoping that day. Monday 25? Yeah. Do I hear what do we got there? Anybody? Go on yeah, once. we can do it. Go in uh, once, I go in work till 10. Go in twice? I'll be here till 7 to 10. In the morning? Yeah. So what about what, 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 10 o'clock on? Yeah, that's good. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Yeah. All right, 10, 10 a.m. on what's, what's the number date on that? The 25th. 25? Monday, Monday. At 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. Will that work for everyone? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Does that work for us, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. At this point, I'm sorry. It was a shot. I'm sorry. I'm just bouncing off Terry over here. He just did ping pong. Any other business coming from the water? You know, I want to talk about the schedule a little bit. Yep. Because, you know, we're down to 10 flights a week, but it looks like May we're going back to 12 flights. Yes. But the time is going to stay the same as it is now. Correct. And then I want to talk about, you know, where they want to get through the giving. Right. And I know, I understand that you couldn't support that. Correct. But it sounds like June, they're going to want to go to. I'll make the motion and change the flight. Give me a second. What do you want? Okay. Let's a second. I know. Thank you.